Welcome, Yvonne. Thank you, Stephanie. It's a pleasure to be here. And it's a pleasure to have you here. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, absolutely. I am a different kind of photographer. I've chosen to be a boutique photographer. So I specialize in portraits of the things, the places, and the people that you love the most. Anything that's going to bring you joy, that's what I want to photograph and create large wall art for you to have in your room to set the tone for your entire day beautiful that sounds amazing <laughs> thank you <laughs> so with boutique photography it's a little bit different it allows me to hold my client's hands sort of right from the initial consultation where we sit down and we talk about what is it that brings you joy and then we design how and where that's going to look on your walls what you want the color scheme to be we sort of touch on all of those different pieces and then we bring it together when we do our shoot beautiful and I see some artwork on your wall is that from a photo shoot that you've done um, actually, that's a series of, of uh, little mini shoots that I would do with myself. Every morning I go for a walk for about um, 45 minutes to sometimes an hour and a half. And in the summertime, I'm stalking people's gardens the entire time and the different <laughs> flowers. And so <laughs> that's, I realized, was what brought me joy was all the colors and the flowers. And so especially in the dead of winter, that wall behind me inspires me to keep going. Yeah, it's beautiful. So can I ask you, what's one achievement you're very proud of? So probably the biggest achievement that I'm actually proud of is learning to say yes to myself. Um, I came from a completely different uh, career and I just found photography very late in my life and creating wall art. And so uh, for example, this May, um, May 13th, I'm actually going to be um, have my photography and my wall art displayed in a art show here in Brockville. And that was a big, a big hurdle for me to get over mentally to let go of my art, have it seen by others and to actually participate in the art show. So learning to say yes to myself has been pivotal. <laughs> that is fabulous. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, so what is one piece of advice that you would offer to other, uh, other people who would like to follow in your path? Um, the best piece of advice I think I can give anyone who is interested in, and you know, I've had this late life sort of career change, is to learn to listen to your own instincts. Um, we often realize that we're not in the best place, we're not happy, we, we don't we haven't identified what really makes us passionate, but we'll settle for the convenience and the comfort of the lifestyle that we've created. And just trusting your instincts and spending and investing that time in figuring out what it is that's going to make you happy. And then get in touch with people who are doing what you want to be doing and learn from them. Because often we're so afraid, we're paralyzed by fear of taking that leap. But really when we start to investigate what's involved in the path, it's often exactly what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. And have there been any barriers? Uh, could you tell me a bit about some of the barriers that you've had <laughs> on your entrepreneurial uh, journey? <laughs> Uh, one or two little barriers. Honestly, I, I, like a lot of people, was really stuck in my head. And I was stuck with expectations of society and what I deemed my family needed out of me. And so it, it kept me in that place where I couldn't put myself first. I couldn't bother to think about what would make me happy because I was too busy in survival mode. And so learning to just kind of step back a little bit from that was a big hurdle. And it took a lot of investment in time um, and work on myself to get past that head trash because we're all hanging on to this mound of it. Most of it doesn't actually belong to us. It comes from other places, what your parents told you, what your family taught you. And then once you start to clear that out of the way, you can really start to figure out what actually is important to you. And so that was a big hurdle. I had some cultural stuff that came along with me as a black woman, um, mm -hmm. even as a Canadian black woman. I didn't think we had issues, <laughs> which I think is hysterical. But what I've learned is, yeah, I was carrying a whole set of baggage that involved just being a black woman. And then the idea of, of being an artist 
well, no, 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 I couldn't do that. I, you know, the art class, I barely got a C. So um, it was figuring out all of those things were just that. They were barriers that weren't actually my barriers and figuring out to let go of them so that I could open the door to possibilities. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And um, how did you fund your business? I, I'm one of those people. I chose to blow up my entire world. I closed down my practice as an advisor and switched gears completely because I needed to make that very clean break. And so um, am I a bit of a starving artist as I start out? Yeah, but I also have built multiple income streams from my photography so that I'm not reliant on just doing portraits. I'm also looking at taking on teaching students how to connect with those things that give you joy. How do you figure out what gives you joy? Because there's no class. No one teaches you that in school. So how do you connect with those feelings and, and find out? So it's a, it's been a, it's been five months and it's, been fantastic it is the scariest five months of my life but it's also been the most fun the happiest I've been and the most excited I jump out of bed every day because I'm looking forward to what I get to do beautiful five months that's fabulous <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, thank you well five months since I sort of made the official full-time leap um, I had started out releasing some of my art to and selling that online just as digital downloads mm -hmm. and a year ago and so it's been a bit of a progression but what I realized is that didn't allow me to have control over my art that just let it out in the universe and so taking responsibility for how I want it displayed what I want displayed when I want it displayed all of those things um, was it an important part of the progression for me? Okay, and you said you cl closed down your practice. So what what exactly um, made you decide to pursue this new business? Um, we were in the middle of a Zoom meeting, and I was meeting with a, a couple, and um, it was in the middle of one of the horrible many storms that we get in the winter time. So mm -hmm. it had been gray and dull for just weeks on end. And we, as we started the Zoom meeting, at the time I had photos behind me, but um, they were in a different configuration and there weren't quite as many of them. And um, they instantly started talking about how happy the photos made them, seeing the, those colors, seeing the vibrancy um, that I had on the wall behind me really excited them. And then they started asking me why I chose what I chose and what it meant to me and what emotions it brought about. And I realized I'd never articulated any of that to anybody. I just put up what I wanted to see on my walls. And we do this, we think, oh, walls, they should be decorated. And we'll buy everybody else's stuff, but we won't think about what actually has meaning to us as we put it up on the wall and what emotions it invokes it for us. So as I was articulating it, I was just like, holy snap this is a game changer. I, I need to do this. And by the time we finished that conversation, yeah, we did our advisor stuff. They bought some insurance. They also asked me to redo their bedroom for them with artwork that had meaning to them. So that, that was the day I kind of started down this path and never looked back. That's amazing. Just in that sense. Wow. And how do you hope to see your business grow? I would love to, you know, at five months, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm having a fantastic time. I'd love to double the amount of projects that I'm working on. And I do really want to start to add teaching as a component in there. Because one of the things that I had a problem with initially was, um, you know, as a woman, I would decorate for the sake of decorating. I would do what I thought magazines were telling me to do. And I wasn't connecting with what had meaning to me and that piece of the puzzle is pivotal because we often discount our own instincts when it comes to that so I really want to focus on creating some education around helping people get comfortable with that concept of hey you know what actually I like these two colors together I don't care what the designers say they go together for me and they make me feel happy and put them up on your walls. So helping people get past themselves a little bit more would be a big component on how I wanna see the business evolve because there is, 
we don't like to think about this, but regardless of what area you're in, you are a coach, you are a teacher. It, it, I feel it's our responsibility if we're going to improve people's lives. We need to touch them with intent. And so that is my goal now is to be purposeful with everything that I do and how I interact with my clients and how they can then, do you have to be me to do what I do? No. Can you be you and do what I do? Absolutely. Why not? That's how I started. <laughs> That's fantastic. I just love it. <laughs> and you really light up, you know, uh, you really light up talking about your business. So it's fantastic. Um, I, I was lucky. I got given some really good advice um, that I've kind of chosen to hold on to really tightly in these last couple of years. And one is that we lift as we climb. And that concept was missing for me most of my life. It was just about survival. Do what you got to do. You, you climb the ladder yourself. No, 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 no. You know what? There's we don't have to have a scarcity mindset. We have to have an abundance mindset because when you do, everything just gets so much lighter. It's so much easier to, to live and be in this world today. And so if we're lifting as we climb, then I'm going to bring you along with me. Why not? We should all benefit from it, right? So that was a big piece. And also to surround yourself with the people that hold your values. They're doing what you're doing. They're dreaming. They're trying to build a business. They're trying to make their ideas come to life because they're going to inspire you on those days when you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that marketing, <laughs> whatever that activity is. Um, and so it's really important to support yourself so that you can feed your soul through this entire process. Because some days are not good days and other days are fantastic days. Those are really good pieces of advice for other female entrepreneurs. Absolutely. Um, well, uh, women entrepreneurs. Um, what uh, made you sign up for the Canadian Women's Chamber of Commerce? It was a big part of recognizing that I had had my time when I thought I protested and I fixed the world. And honestly, I stopped and then I had kids. I was like, I'm done. Okay, the world is better now. And then my kids are now leaving the home and I'm realizing the world is not where I want it to be. The world is not where it needs to be. My work here is not done. And so I wanted to get back involved with women specifically because that's who I walk in through this world as, as a woman. And I think we do have very specific needs as business people that have to be addressed. And so I wanted to be with other women who are claiming their power and are starting to understand what that means and how that's going to look because it's going to look different for all of us, but that doesn't mean we're not, we, we can't band together and help each other get there. Mm -hmm. So what is the top, say three to five benefits you've gotten from being a member of the chamber of Com women's chamber of commerce? I've got a confidence in myself that I never had before as a woman. And it's weird to say that because I've been I've been doing this my whole life, right? <laughs> I'm not new to this. But as a woman, I really felt isolated and alone most of my life. I felt like other women were competition more than they were companions, more than they were teachers. And at, it took a long time. It took a good hot minute for me to get that message. But I got it now because I feel that, that connection, that community that we all need and it's right here so that's probably the number one benefit that I've gotten but I've also met some really incredible women doing really difficult things in difficult areas and openly uh, openly saying that it, it doesn't feel good it's kind of scary but I do it anyways because that's what I'm doing right now mm -hmm. I'm being okay with being in the scary spot and and it's fantastic so that sense of community and that sense of common goals and really just being okay with respecting other women and celebrating them and celebrating their wins so those are probably three of the biggest things I've gotten from it because now I, I'm the biggest cheerleader of other women in their businesses because I'm learning as I'm watching them and we're growing and it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. What does success look like for you? 
that was a big part of changing changing all of this was that success is very different for me right now it's not it's not so much about money it's about relationship it's about connection it's about community it's about changing changing some of the old world thinking that no longer serves us anymore and being open to not having all the answers, but just being open to the part of the journey where you have to explore what can those new answers look like? And and how's that going to change you? And recognizing I'm not the same artist I was yesterday, today, and I'm not going to be the same artist tomorrow. And you know what? That's exciting. That's fun. That charges me up. Where before I was so worried about fitting in this little tiny box and staying in that little tiny box and you know, I don't, I don't want that anymore. I don't think it serves any of us anymore. So. If you could go back and speak to yourself five years ago, what advice would you give yourself? Five years ago, I honestly would have told myself to, it's time to stop hiding from your head trash and actually go in there and deal with it. And alert, figuring out how to deal with it was very important. In my 20s, I thought it was therapy. In my 30s, I thought it was um, self-discovery and exploration through different courses and programs. And ultimately, they got me where I needed to get to, but I would have loved to get there a little bit faster. And so um, there was a lot of trauma in my early life that I had to have addressed and I had to deal with. And that trauma had kept me sort of locked in a place in a space. So I would have said, deal with your trauma sooner. But that's all I would change out of everything because the whole entire journey has led me to here. So how can I possibly complain about it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I found what I needed and most people don't find that, um, you know, by this age or even in their lifetime. So I feel very blessed and very lucky to have done that. Beautiful. That's a wonderful attitude. And uh finding that blessing out of, out of your past struggles. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So can you talk about your expertise a little bit more and how people can get a hold of you? Absolutely. So um, I guess my expertise is we all have this toolbox that you're kind of adding skills to as you kind of go along the way. And as I've gone along the way, one of the things I've been able to do is really hone in on how to create the relationship with people. And that relationship helps me to a identify where their limiting behaviors are coming into play and then help them recognize that limiting behavior and just give them that little bit of door opening so they can move past that space. And so helping them understand if you like these two colors and you want them on your wall, then, do it in those two colors, put it on the wall, (laughs) you know, so little things like that. So I really want to say, I think my expertise is in helping people recognize what brings them joy and how to bring that into their life. And we're not always in the best place to completely open the door. I'm not suggesting anybody else blow their life up, but what I am suggesting is start to find those little ways to bring that into your existence right now and let it grow. Because great things are going to happen. So people can find me. um, I named my company actually Alchemy Photography. And one of the reasons for the choice of Alchemy was that I wanted people to understand that this isn't just me. This is that combination of me and you and your thoughts and my ideas and all of that put together. And then we make magic. And you end up with fantastic wall art. So um, alchemy.ca is is my business that's how you find me um you can email me at yvonne at alchemy dot uh, alchemy photography dot ca and um i'm on instagram under alchemy 22 and <laughs> what i'm going to say is go to the website that is the the start of everything great um there's lots of other social media stuff but it all starts there. Instagram's fantastic too. If you want to see a gallery of the my specific artwork, um, I have links to that from my Instagram at alchemyphotography.ca.